And uh, for that, we're joined now by uh, Tamara Al Rifai from Amman, uh, Jordan. She's the UNRWA Director for External Relations and Communications. Welcome to TRT. Well, thank you so much for making time for us today. And uh, I just want to start by uh, expressing our condolences for the more than 100 members of staff that have been killed um, in this past uh, month. Um, Tamara, your priorities for the humanitarian aid, um, your plan, if the pause is announced in um, the coming hours, what will you, your priorities be? Thank you for your condolences. If the pause truly kicks in, which is what we hope and what we welcome, our priorities will be to be able to access the northern part of the Gaza Strip, because that is the part that has been almost entirely sealed off for a few weeks now, and where my colleagues who work at UNRWA, the largest UN agency in Gaza right now, have not been able to go and take the trucks full with food, clean drinking water or medicines into the north. So we truly welcome this pause, we actually wanted to become a ceasefire so that there's a cessation of hostilities. And we want safe and unimpeded access of our trucks and humanitarian assistance in significant size and volume. So not just a few trucks every day, but really 500 trucks is mm -hmm. the minimum that we need to be able to conduct a proper humanitarian response. And tomorrow, if I may ask, uh... I know th this is a, a, such a, a big, important question. Do you know why there's a delay? We do not know why there's a delay, but we know that we are just as anxious mm -hmm. as the people of Gaza mm -hmm. and as everyone to see the cessation of hostilities and to see, uh, uh, and to see an actual change. Mm -hmm. You know, we are receiving, as of yesterday, more than one million displaced people mm -hmm. in our shelters. We're talking about over 150 shelters. Most of them are so overcrowded that the spread of diseases, respiratory, gastric, skin diseases, is now alarming to us. So it's very important that we're able to release some of this tension by bringing in more aid and more reassurance. And therefore, the kickoff kick of this humanitarian pause and this agreement is very important for everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tamara... If the four-day pause does happen, if it is extended, you will need extra hands, won't you? Extra staff. Will international staff come into Gaza, international aid staff, to help you and your team? As you said, more than 1.5 million people now displaced in UN schools, in UN shelters. Clearly, you will be needing extra hands, extra help, but of course there will be risks involved. We definitely need extra staff. We need extra international staff to go in, and we need some of our international staff that is currently in Gaza to exit and then be able to come back. But really, the backbone of UNRWA in Gaza is our Palestinian staff. We have 13,000 Palestinian colleagues who are from Gaza themselves, most of them are living exactly this, in the same conditions as people, as displaced in our own shelters. Although 5,000 of my Gaza colleagues have continued to work every single day in the shelters. They are the heroes. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who need to see more aid coming in because they are the ones facing the very anxious and frustrated displaced people in our shelters who have not been receiving sufficient food, medical attention and water because of the scarcity of the trucks that have gone in. And fuel has been such a huge issue. I understand that no fuel has come into to Gaza. Correct me if, if I'm wrong. And, and, and what impact has that ha had and what will you be doing now once you get that fuel? As of last week, we've started receiving fuel again, and that makes a huge difference in our ability to move our trucks around or to power our electricity generators and our water desalination plants. Plus, it makes a huge difference in the ability of bakeries to function because bakeries need wheat, clean water, and flour. So we've only been receiving fuel over the last few days. This is part of an agreement that we reached with the Israeli authorities. 
However, we have been receiving half of the quantities that we need for our operations. And if we are going to start sending more humanitarian teams and supplies into the north, we're going to need a larger quantity of fuel and a larger quantity of assistance altogether. Food, blankets, mattresses, um, medical supplies. Noting, though, that we have 124 medical teams that go around in mobile clinics to the different shelters, they also need fuel to be able to move. Absolutely. And Tamara, you mentioned uh, the diseases that are taking, uh, developing now among people in shelters, skin diseases. Talk to us a bit more about uh, their conditions. The most uh, striking element in the shelters is the overcrowding and the fact that people are really body to body everywhere. There is no personal space and there is no privacy at all. And this is typically con a condition, a situation conducive to the spread of diseases and to um, uh, con like even simple contagious uh, illnesses like a common cold can spread when people are very, very crowded, uh, huddled in together. We have noticed that there's a sharp increase in skin diseases because people don't have access to adequate quantities of water to take showers. We're talking about 700 people to one shower unit. We're also talking about 150 people to one toilet. This is very, very unsanitary and unhealthy. We also notice the spread of respiratory diseases, and that is primarily because of this, the cold weather that came in with the winter while people were not prepared, many of them having left their houses with only the clothes on their back, and many of them not able to receive um, additional blankets or warm clothes because we're not getting enough supplies um, every single day, and we're prioritizing food and water. There's also a spread in gastric diseases, including diarrhea, because people are drinking contaminated water, precisely because our water desalination plants aren't working full-fledged, full-time, because they need fuel to work, and we've had to ration our use of fuel. Extraordinary circumstances that uh, people are living in and uh, your staff are working in. As you say, also, uh, they are heroes. We wish you the best of uh, luck in the coming days. Uh, Tamara Adrifai from Amman, the UNRWA Director of External Relations and Communications. Thank you so much for your time today.